Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Stonebridge Online Youth Edition. We're going to worship for you guys and try and worship along with us, even though I know it's weird. And Maggie's going to pray for us. Uh, hey, God, um, thank you so much that we have the opportunity to do things like this, Lord, um, even these, in these crazy times. Um, I just want to ask that you help all of us, Lord, to focus on you, really um, dig in deep, Lord, even though we are not together and it feels weird, Lord, um, that you would just help each and every one of us to connect to you. We love you. Amen.
guys. Good morning. Um, I think there's some confusion for some of y'all. Y'all think that we're doing this live right now. We're not. This is Wednesday afternoon at 1.20. And we're trying something a little bit different this week. I'm not sitting down. I'm not in 166. So if you see me start to move off the frame, you know the problem is I can't talk and stand up at the same time without moving. So all of those things, some grace would be great for that um, moving forward so that I don't just... Uh, just completely botched this thing by standing way over there against that wall and you can't hear anything I'm saying. Um, so this morning is Palm Sunday. Uh, for those of you who don't know what Palm Sunday is, it's this kind of on the, on the church calendar, it's always the Sunday before Easter because it, it occurred the Sunday before Easter um, when Jesus comes into Jerusalem. And so before we get into really what Palm Sunday is, I want to give you some context for it. The biggest thing that we can understand contextually about this is the entire last week of Jesus' life on earth, his ministry life on earth, Jesus is going to fulfill multiple prophecies. Uh, all of them are in regards to who he is, and this entrance into Jerusalem is just another example of that. And really, think about it this way. We're going to look at Matthew 21, 1 through 9 this morning in just a minute, but this context is important to get first because it's this basically what he's doing it's a parable acted out he's not telling a story anymore he's acting out a story that everybody here would know and understand and so what we see through this is Jesus publicly claiming to be the Messiah and everybody there can't miss it or nobody there can miss it and so this is the fulfillment specifically of Zechariah 9:9. I'm going to read that to you real quick it says rejoice greatly daughter of Zion shout daughter of Jerusalem See, you, see, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey. And so that's what Zechariah is saying hundreds of years before this event happens. And Matthew records the event. So again, Matthew 21, 1 through 9 is what we're looking at. It says this, As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once, at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Zechariah. That's what, we're, that's what we just read. Say to, daughter, say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while the others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds then went ahead of him, and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he, is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So again, the first thing that jumps out at us specifically is this reference to Zechariah 9.9. It's obvious that Matthew wants us all to know that Jesus is fulfilling this prophecy. That's the most important part to understand here. And so as he's fulfilling it, he's claiming... I am the Messiah. That's what Jesus is saying. And, and we call this Palm Sunday, as you saw through the thing, that start throwing palm branches down in front of him. That's why it gets the name Palm Sunday. And really, it's just this reminder that God keeps his promises and God can, God can be trusted. God promised way back when through Zechariah that he was going to send his king, he's going to send his savior, he's going to send his Messiah riding on a donkey into Jerusalem. And then he keeps that promise. And so... God makes tons of promises through Scripture, and Scripture is just a record of how he keeps them. And so there's promises God has made to you directly, and he's faithful. And if you don't hear anything else I say today, if nothing else resonates with you, if you don't, if you don't have anything else that you can grab hold of this, if you've got to take one thing from this entire talk, it's to know that God's faithful to keep his promises. God can be trusted, and if he's promised you something, he's going to keep that promise. And I want to encourage you just to trust that and believe that. The second thing that stood out to me in this passage was the use of the word Hosanna. Um, in Old Testament Hebrew, the word Hosanna means save us. And really we see it most specifically in Psalm 118, verse 25. It says, Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. And if you add 26 to that, it said, Blessed he who comes in the name of the Lord. For the, from the house of the Lord, we bless you. That's the exact same thing that the crowds are shouting as Jesus is coming in. Lord, save us. So this Hosanna phrase, save us, is this crowd recognizing the saving power of Jesus. Even though a week from now, 
or a week from then, they were going to betray him. The same people who are shouting out right now, save us, are going to be the same people yelling, crucify him in just a week. It does say to us that, we, that they understand and they know who he is. And it's important that the word Hosanna, save us, is this crowd recognizing that he's the only one that can save them. The second time, by the time we get to this time period, though, the New Testament use of the words, the, you know how words evolve over time and take on different meaning. Well, Hosanna evolves from the Old Testament to the New Testament. It goes from save us to this loud shout of praise. And so the crowd here is actually saying two things. One, save us. Two, praise him. Right? There's these two different things that you can see here, these two different actions. One is the, is the initial step in response to Jesus. The second is a result of what he's done for us. And so there's a lot of times in our lives we, sh we should be saying Hosanna, one, to save us, and maybe other times to praise him. And then most of the time it's both, right? It is save us. Even though you've saved me from sin and death, there are other things in my life and in our lives that we want him to save us from. And so we, we engage that part of what he does, but we also praise him for the things that he's, he's already done for us. And so, again... Two ways of looking at that word. But then the crowd doubles down. This next phrase um, is, is pretty significant, and I didn't want to gloss over it. But this idea of Hosanna in the highest. When I looked it up, it means, like if we literally translate it, let even the angels in the heights of heaven sing praises. This is a huge deal, right? I, we talk about Hosanna and we praise him, and a lot of times... I feel like I limit my praise of God to Sunday mornings in that short period of time I have to worship him, right? And that's even harder now when we can't gather with other people. So if there's any type of worship and praising him in the highest that takes place in my life, it really has to take place in my house. And that feels awkward and weird sometimes. And it's like it's, you don't have like the loud music to drown your own singing. I don't know if you're like me. I can't sing at all. And so if it's just me and my family, none of us have any singing ability whatsoever in our house. When we start singing on Sunday mornings, when we're watching the adult service, if we start singing in worship, it's just terrible, right? There's no joyful noise. There's just like there's animals coming from long ways off because of how badly we sing. And so that feels awkward. That feels weird. And and it feels like I'm missing out on a huge part of my relationship with the Lord because when it comes to this corporate idea of worship and worshiping together, we can't do that anymore. But for me, this is encouraging because the crowd is even engaging the heavens. Like God's praises or the praise to Jesus aren't just limited to us in a church building. They're expanded out to the heights of heaven, right? So it's all the way up to the heights of heaven. The, the, the highest angels sitting seated around the throne of God are praising Jesus, and we're called to do the same thing. Which for me is encouraging that it doesn't matter how I do it. It doesn't matter that I sound like a dying cat when I sing. The fact that I'm engaging the Lord and worshiping the Lord, that's the most important part of, of what I'm doing in my house. And so hopefully... You can feel some encouragement about that regardless of how well you sing or what you do. But for us, I thought about this passage, and, and I'm never going to get away from this evangelist idea. I just It's part of me. And so every time I get up to talk, it's something that I have to talk about. And, and for me, it's this idea. The first idea is which Hosanna do we need? Are we in a place where we need the Old Testament Hosanna, God save me, and not, not talking about from physical peril or physical things that could happen to me, but save me from sin and death. Are we at that place or are we at the place where we're just praising him for saving us from sin and death? Those are the two places to be. Now, there's, of course, there's always times where we want both of those, right? But if we've never made a decision to follow Jesus, we're, we're in that first place of Hosanna, save us, God. Because we are mired in our own sin and we need to be reconciled to him. But most of you have already made that decision. You probably wouldn't be watching this if you haven't made that decision. And so we're in a place where we need to praise him. Hosanna for us a lot of times is this sense of praise and engaging him and being with him. And so we have to invite this idea of Hosanna in the highest into our lives, right? Not Hosanna save us all the time. All, we can always be saved from something, and we're always being saved from something by the Lord. 
Praising him is a little bit harder, especially, like I said, in times like this. And so how do we invite this idea of Hosanna in the highest or praise him to the highest level of heaven into our home when we're just separated from our normal way of worship? Well, one of the ways we're going to do that today is Maggie and Louise led worship earlier before this video came on. You got their worship video. That's one way that we can engage. The other way we do this that kind of the simple, low-hanging fruit of how do we invite this in our home is pray, worship, and read, right? Engage the Lord in prayer. Throw on worship music and listen to it in your house. Go to your room. Then nobody cares what you sound like, and you can sing as loudly as you want to. And then read and study your Bible. Those are kind of the three staples, the easiest ways to connect with the Lord uh, during times like this and, and just kind of engaging that. The hardest way, especially now, I don't know about how it is for y'all, but in my house growing up, the hardest people for me to be around and love a lot of the time were my three siblings. And it was much easier to tear them down and to cut them down and to argue and fight with them than it was for me ever to serve them. But that's a way of showing Hosanna in the highest in our home. How do we engage the people in our house and how do we serve them? We can praise by serving and the hardest people to serve a lot of times are in our home and we're stuck in our homes. So these are your people, right? There's places, other places you can serve by giving the dollar to the student, giving fun. That's a way to serve. But really kind of hands-on serving, it's not allowed right now except in the context of your house. And so how do you serve? You don't have any brothers and sisters or your brothers and sisters relationship is great and you're already doing that. How do you serve your mom, your dad, other people who are inside your house? How do you serve all of these people? And so I want to encourage you. This is a way of engaging in this idea of Hosanna in the highest. It's a way of stepping into a place of God permeating your home. You pray, you read, you worship, and then you serve. It's an, out, it's an action that comes from relationship, right? The more relationship we have, the more engaged we are with Jesus, the more desire we have to serve. And as we serve other people, especially those in our home, what you're actually saying in a crowd of people is Hosanna or Hosanna in the highest. You're, you're claiming who you belong to. You're claiming who you serve. It's not them, the people in your house. It's Jesus, and he's the reason why we do that. And so what you're doing is standing up in a crowd and claiming something that, you, that we always say with our mouths, but very rarely can we, do we follow through with our deeds and our actions and how we treat people who are closest to us. And so this is an opportunity to practice that this week. It's also an opportunity going into Holy Week, right? So this next week... After it's starting on Monday, we start Holy Week leading into Easter, and it's no surprise at this point. I'm sure you all have figured out that we're going to be doing Easter the same way. It's going to be, um, you know, live streamed or, or recorded things. You're going to watch it online or YouTube. And so that's not ideal. It's not the best thing. It's not the best way to do things, but it's the only way to do them right now. And so we want to encourage you to make this week something special. Holy Week leads us up to Easter. Easter is the biggest holiday in the church. It's the most important holiday in the church. And we want to encourage you to serve other people, right? First in your home. But secondly, you have impact and influence. And I want to ask you for you to write your own devotional. Video yourself giving that devotional. Send it to me. And we want to post a student-led devotional on Instagram every day this week. And some of you are like, I don't want this on Instagram. I don't want somebody to see this. I don't want anybody to know about that I did this. That's fine. Send it to me and let me have it, and I can pray for you and encourage you, and we won't post it publicly, but we'll just have it that you're engaging, and I know how to pray for you. But some of you are okay with getting it out there and showing, you know, giving your testimony or giving a devotional, either one, but I would love to be able to post something every day next week of a devotional or your testimony and where you've seen God working in your life or where you're asking God to get involved in your life. And so it's an awesome opportunity, again, with crowds of people around you, even though it's virtual, to stand up in a crowd and say, Hosanna, praise him, Hosanna, save us, Hosanna in the highest. So that's my encouragement this week. Uh, send those to me. Uh, you can text them to me or you can email them to me. We'll get them posted online. Um, you can also connect. Again, we'll have Wednesday night Bible study next Wednesday. Uh, you can connect there if you're not sure what you want to do. Call. We're here for you to serve you and to pray for you. 
But we, we would love to do any of those things for you. But we would really love for you to lead others in our community. You, again, you do that by, sh- by standing up in the crowd and sharing Hosanna. And you just praise him. So Palm Sunday for us is a time to proclaim the gospel to those who don't know it and share how we as believers and followers of Jesus are connecting with him in a deeper way.